A winner is a dreamer who never gives up. It's important for you to understand that your experience facing and overcoming adversity is actually one of your biggest advantages. How strong is your why? It's not enough for you to just say, I want to do well. You have to believe that you will do well and you have to pursue it. You have to keep going when you run into challenges. Those who succeed are not fearless. They had to show up even when they were afraid. And I know it's difficult to follow your dreams, but it's even worse if you don't. You have to find a way to build your own dream or someone else will hire you to build theirs. If you give up on your dream, what's left? See, self-discipline begins with the mastery of your thoughts. If you don't control what you think, you can't control what you do. Your dreams are important. They are significant. They are valuable. They matter. You need to take your life, your goals, your inspirations, your aspirations, your desires seriously. Because if you don't, no one else will. You do have the power to create an amazing future. It's okay to rest. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to take some time to pull your thoughts together. But it's not okay to quit. See, self-discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. Self-discipline is the magic power that makes you virtually unstoppable. Self-discipline is the center of the universe for success. Self-discipline is doing within while you're doing without. There are going to be times when you feel like you're losing your mind and you study for hours and you're going to take an exam and you will not pass. A student is resilient. A student is disciplined. A student is committed. A student is consistent. Why did you start in the first place? And what was the emotion, the feeling, what was the science and the psychology behind the decision that you made? And nine times out of ten, I can tell you why you started. You started because you were hungry. This is the year of the breakthrough. This is the year of the what? This is the year of the what? This is the year of the what? Act like you hear me. Every dream requires discipline. Every dream requires discipline. You are your only limit. Your potential is endless. Go do what you dreamed you could do. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Some of you are interested in this work, and you like telling people you do it. It make you feel good. But you're not, you're not 120 though. Some of you are committed, but just like your side hustle. I'm just being real, y'all. I was fully committed. I left everything and started doing it. And because I was fully committed, the world responded to that commitment. But you just interested. You're not really committed to it. You're not putting in 50, 60 hours. When my wife got diagnosed with MS, I never quit doing the work because I wasn't doing it for people, I was doing it for the kids that I was doing it for. So even with MS, she had to quit her job, I'd take it to another level. Some of y'all are negotiating, not because of the company, you negotiate because you're not the best at what you do. And I need y'all to go back and be the best at what you do. And then I need y'all to come together as the best and then take this thing to the next level. And there are some of you, you know what you want. You know what you want, but you are not personally willing to do the work it takes to get it. What you're trying to do is do what you've done on this level and get the next level. You're trying to do exactly what you're doing on this level. You're like, I'm getting up every day. I'm putting in two and a half. I'm putting in three and I'm not getting the opportunity. The opportunity might require three and a half. I'm lifting weights. 
I'm eating right and I'm not getting the opportunity. It might require getting up and working out three and a half. It might require you saying no to your friends. It might require you changing your diet. It might require you moving to another city. Whatever it takes, you gotta be willing to do it and you keep saying you're not there because of something else because it's easier to blame somebody else. Because now you don't gotta do no work when you blame somebody else. Guess who gotta do the work? They gotta do the work. But guess who got the power? They got the power. How many of y'all tired of other people having the power? Let me see your hand. You want the power. I'm just being real, hands down. Hands down, think about what I just said. How many of you want the power? Let me see your hands. Good, write down, write down next to your crazy idea some of the things that you know you're doing wrong that's messing up what you're doing. Self-discipline is the ability to pursue, overcome, and control the feelings, temptations, and weaknesses that we all have. Self-mastery can be seen if you're willing to look for it. It's the doctor that went to school for 10 years studying to find the next cure for cancer. It's the self-control that divides the people who win and the people who gave up. How much self-discipline do you have? Are your goals being met? Are you able to say no to the distractions? Can you take the harder road? Can you climb the mountain of success when you feel out of breath? Self-discipline is a choice that can move you towards or away from your goal. And when you decide to become aware of your choices and form a habit of doing what's best for you is when you'll start to master self-discipline. Stop overanalyzing and listen to the voice of your heart when making those decisions. Get rid of the alcohol, lose the toxic friends, pick up the book, do the homework, put away the excuses, and start disciplining your mind. Self-discipline cannot be bought. You gotta make a commitment to stay focused. In a world that's filled with laziness, pride, greed, lust, gluttony, envy, and anger, we are unrestrained. We overindulge and we put a lack of effort. We have excessive desires and we have trouble controlling our feelings. This is part of our human nature, but only the self-disciplined are the ones who can truly control their future. The self-disciplined are the superheroes. The self-disciplined are the winners. You know what it takes. There's no excuse. Be diligent. Be patient. Be generous. Be thankful. Be humble. Be moderate. Be pure. Separate yourself from distractions. Remember that you are in charge. Do not be afraid to fail. Master your mindset. The road may be hard, but the results are priceless. Self-discipline is the only skill needed to master any others. Stay focused. Change your habits. Chase after your goals. Control your thinking. No exceptions. Discipline is remembering what you want. It's choosing between what you want now and what you want most. Self-discipline is everything. If you can conquer your physical and mental being, then you can conquer anything in this world. Don't let your circumstances control you. You control your circumstances. If you do, what you've always done and you'll get what you've always got if you want something you've never had you have to do something you've never done motivational speeches can uplift your dreams but it's self-discipline that will keep them there persistence is discipline in action conquer yourself yes you can Sacrifice is always required, 
on the road to your dream. The question is, what are you willing to sacrifice? I heard a story that was, that was powerful. It's a story of a general who was leading his men into war. And as they got into their fleet of boats, they were going to take an island. As they reached the island, the men got off the boats and the general gathered his men before they went into battle. He looked at them and he gave them three words, burn the boats. Now, this was powerful because he's telling them there is no retreat, absolutely no retreat. Like option A is the only option, option B isn't possible. And he instilled into his men a mindset of courage and clarity, of conviction that allowed them to understand that this is the energy that you need to go and win this battle. The reason why this story is so powerful because each and every one of us, as we're going into the battle of life, whatever it is that we are trying to accomplish, this mindset is necessary. Like you dream getters, when you're going after a goal, when you're going after your aspirations, when you're going after something that might feel different to you, it might be bigger than the shoes that you're in right now, what it's telling you, what the general was telling his men was that I need your mindset to be ready for the war that we have in front of us. And oftentimes, many of us step into new scenarios and new arenas with doubt. We're clouded with doubt and we wonder why it is so difficult for us to grow into the version of the best version of ourselves. And if you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take an island, burn your boats and you will take the island because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. And the general was looking at his men and he understood that he needed to literally light a fire within them. He needed to ignite something in them that let them know that he was going to lead them to victory and nothing else. And oftentimes for many of us, that is a difficult mindset to get into. It is very difficult to step into a new arena, a new situation, a new environment and have the courage, the confidence, the conviction and the clarity to know that is yours for the taking. Sometimes it will be time, sometimes it will be effort, sometimes it will require isolation, sometimes it will require you to put yourself in environments where you have to grow, sometimes. It will require you to make new relationships and put yourself in environments that you're not aware of. Are you willing to make the necessary sacrifices to become the individual that you need to be to go after that dream? So my question to you, as we step into a new arena, as we're growing into the best version of ourselves, have we burned our boats? Don't look at me like that. Some of you guys have been defeated already in your life. You saying to yourself, you know what? I got a GED. Nobody wants me. I used to be an alcoholic. Nobody wants me. My own father used to tell me I was no good. Nobody wants me. I'll just work this little dead end job and we'll figure out what's next because I don't have anywhere to go. Some of you guys can relate to what I'm saying. Somehow, some way, you've disqualified yourself. I work with so many people and I can relate to them. Nobody can beat you but you. Nobody can stop you but you. But the worst thing you can do is disqualify yourself. Now I'm 50 years old. I got a wife. I got kids, I got mortgages, I got bills, school is over. That's all about the real deal right now, you guys with me. Your mom and dad have this story, your grandfather, your grandmother has his and her story, now you are building your story. I was at a track meet one day, and I was watching a 4 by one relay. And I love a four by one relay because that first sprinter takes off with the baton in their hand and they run as hard as they can, as fast as they can, and when they get to the next athlete, they yell, stick! And the next athlete takes off running, but they reach back. They just reach back a little bit. Then they run as hard as they can, as fast as they can, for 100 meters, and then they yell, stick! 
And it's so important to make a successful handoff because if you don't make a successful handoff, you are disqualified. And the next athlete's turn is to run as hard as you can, as fast as you can, and then they yell, stick! And they hand it to the anchor. That anchor is Carl Lewis. That anchor is Flo Jo. That anchor is Usain Bolt. And that last 100 meters, whoa! They come around that curve, and all you hear is elbows and form, and they come down and cross that finish line. Oh! So I got this track move, and I saw them handing this baton. Stick! 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 Your father might be from Russia. Your grandfather might be from Cuba, Colombia. I don't know where they're from, but let me tell you something. At some point, they're going to yell, stick! And that baton's in your hand. So we don't have time to be silly anymore, would you agree? We don't have time to play games anymore, would you agree? You got to get that baton in your hand. You got to run as hard as you can, as fast as you can. And every day in that car in the morning, my dad would just talk to me. Like, son, I'm from Tennessee, son. Education is very valuable. You cannot the value education where you education is important, son. That's the way out. Education, working hard, education, getting trained. Smart families are training and development organizations masquerading as a family. We break through and we break them. So everybody always asks me, ET, what was it like being homeless? I don't remember. What was it like eating out of trash cans? I don't remember. I ain't on that. Let me tell y'all the hardest part of my life. The hardest part of my life was not being homeless. I ain't had no dreams or no goals. I didn't want nothing. Eating out of trash cans wasn't the hardest thing I've ever done. The hardest thing I ever did was get my GED, go to college, study every doggone day and still fail. That's hard. That's hard. When you write in the paper for three, four weeks, you turn it in and you get, still get a 2.0. That's hard. It's hard when you're in a library and you're studying and you read and you take the test and you get a 55. That's hard. So what I want you to understand about the breakthrough is that 90% is work, but the last 10%, that's fight. Listen to me, you don't get a breakthrough by working. You get a breakthrough when you fight. And I had to fight. I had to stay up all night. I didn't get them, I didn't get them with talent. I didn't beat them with talent. I looked at their weaknesses and I said, boom, they will not outwork me. I'll go quicker, I'll go harder, I'll go longer, I'll go faster. Beast mode, one, two, three. Beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. One, two, three. All right, now I'm gonna tell you this story. I gotta get out of here. And the story is about, you guys have probably heard about this before. It was a, it was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money and so he went to this guru, right? And he told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach at 4 a.m. He liked the beach. I said, I want to make money. I don't want to swim. So the young man got there at 4 a.m. He all ready to rock and roll, got on the suit. He should have wore shorts. The old man grabs his hand and said, how bad do you want to be successful? He said, real bad. He said, walk on out in the water. So he walks out into the water, watch this. When he walks out into the water, it goes waist deep. So he like, this guy crazy. I'm Adrian, he's like, I wanna make money. He got me out here swimming. I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I wanna make money. He got me in. So he said, come out a little further. Walked out a little further. Then he had it right around this area. The shoulder area. So this old man crazy. He making money, but he crazy. He said, come on out a little further. Came out a little further. It was right at his mouth. My man like, I'm about to go back in here. This guy is mine. So the old man said, I thought you said you wanted to be successful. He said, I do. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down, holding him down. My man getting scratching, holding him down. He had him held down just before my man was about to pass out. He raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. Somebody answered the question for me. He said, when you were underwater, what did you want to do? He said, I wanted to breathe. He told the guy, he said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I don't know how many of y'all got asthma here today, but if you ever had an asthma attack before, you short of breath, the only thing you're trying to do is get some air. You don't care about no basketball game. 
You don't care what's on TV. You don't care about nobody calling you. You don't care about a party. The only thing you care about when you're trying to breathe is to get some fresh air. That's it. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Beyonce said once she was on the set doing her thing, three days had gone by, she forgot she didn't eat. Cause she was engaged. I'll never forget uh, when 50 Cent was doing his movie, I did a little research on 50 and 50 said that when he wasn't doing the movie, he was doing the soundtrack. And they said, when do you sleep, 50? Sleep, he says, sleep. Sleep is for those people who are broke. I don't sleep. He said, I got an opportunity to make a dream become a reality. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you will never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money, because I got it in here. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in three season. I'm gonna say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal, some work harder in pre-season. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA, and even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meets with you, you say, I don't want to talk to your TA. I don't pay the TA, I pay you to teach me. So you gonna have to find some time to meet me. If I gotta meet you at the mall, if I gotta meet you at your house, you are going to see me. Listen to me, all men are created equal. Some work hard in preseason. When I went to college, guys were way smarter than me. 4.0s, 3.0, they went to the Ivy League high schools, came to Oakwood from these great high schools. Most of them are not doing what I'm doing. Why? Because it's not about where you come from. It's about heart. You come to a place where, you know, being smart ain't enough. You gotta have heart. That's number one. Watch number two. The important thing is this. You're right in why I'm saying it. The most important thing is this. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. That's the number two thing. You gotta catch that one. To be able to, listen to me, at any moment, some of you, you can make sacrifices when Monday Night Football is not on. You can make a sacrifice, but when the game come on, for some reason, you just attach to it. For some of you, when your favorite show come on, you, you, can, be, you can make sacrifices on Sunday when there ain't nothing going on. But when your favorite show comes on Monday, bam, some of you, you focus into the phone ring, and then you're like, I gotta answer it. If I don't answer the phone, I'm gonna die. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. I'm gonna say it again, I'm gonna hurt somebody. I'm gonna hurt somebody. Some of you need to give up your cell phone because the time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. And somebody has told you, you couldn't live without it. I'm talking about going deep now, giving up stuff. Watch what it says. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what we are for what we could be. I don't do well in math, you're right. You ain't never studied. I'm not good in writing because you have never written before. But I dare you to fail in writing for a whole year to see if you can get to the end. I dare you to fail. I dare you to take that same class over and over again. I dare you to stop dropping classes like you soft. My father taught me something very valuable. But you know what? You will dwell in what you dwell on. You will dwell in what you dwell on. 
What you dwell in, you dwell on. So can I give you a little bit of advice? Make sure your value system is good. Make sure your value system makes sense. People say all the time, well, what's most important to you? God, family, work. And I know what you're going to write down, but it's got to be real in your heart. Does that make sense? What was in my heart was sports, and that's no lie. My father said, redo your value system, son, and screw up. I read it the next day. I said, Dad, you ready? Okay, Dad, I'm going to graduate college in four years. I'm going to play in the NBA. I'm going to make more money in business than I did in sports. You know what my father said? I like it, son. I like it. I want you to take those goals out and look at them every single day. Before I knew it, that 2.1 turned into a 2.9. And I realized, you know what? I could have had a 3.0 easy if I would have taken advantage and been a little bit more mature in my past life. Some of you guys used to be immature in your past life. Now you're not in middle school anymore. You're not in high school. Childhood is over, would you agree? And grown men and grown women think a certain way, operate a certain way, and have a certain mindset and mentality. I want you to understand you are a part of a legacy. You've heard about your mom's story. You heard about your dad's story. Now it's time for you to build your story. But I busted my butt for you, son. I busted my butt. I went back to college for you, son. I got educated for you, son. Everything I do is for you, son. See, right now, I want you to understand you are a part of a legacy. Many of you guys, your mom made sacrifices for you. Your dad made sacrifices for you. Now it's time for you to grab the bull by the horns and impact your legacy. Is everybody with me?